All right, hello. Uh, we're out at Wheeler Farm, and I'm just... Someone else has something to say. I'm out here scouting some bodies of water that we can test with our test kit, um, provided by the Great Salt Lake Institute. So I came out here to Wheeler Farm about last season. Um, it was a little bit in the winter time. No, when was it? Springtime. It was a while ago. With COVID, it's hard to know what season's what. But here we are in fall, and I'm excited to go back out and test these wetlands. So behind me is a beautiful pond. We'll be taking a number of different observations, like the biological survey, figuring out what types of animals are out here, and plants that live on the banks and in the waters. And then we'll dive in to look at the invisible world of water, which includes everything like temperature, pH, the amount of hydrogen ions that are in the water, which can give us a clue of how healthy the ecosystem is. We'll also look at things like nitrates, phosphates, which are runoff of agriculture, um, oftentimes in fertilizers, so sometimes when you see farm fields, you might make a hypothesis that there might be higher nitrogens and phosphorus, phosphates. Um, we're also gonna look at dissolved oxygen. So in a eutrophic system, there is oftentimes low dissolved oxygen. Um, and that is because there is lots of, oh my gosh, we gotta make sure this is right. All right, and so if we want to make sure that these riverways stay healthy and clean, and we don't end up like this dead man in his boat. Come out and help us test the waters. The ducks will be excited to see you. You'll for sure learn something new. Have your eyes opened to the possibilities when you get out here, make a friend, have fun, get messy, your hands wet and dirty. Enjoy soaking the sunshine, do school outside of school, no four walls necessary here to learn. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow at Wheeler Farm. Alright, and there's already so many cool research questions that I'm excited for you to test out tomorrow, as well as just making your own research question. So, something that popped in my head is wanting to know what's the effect of faster moving water versus slower moving water on things like the temperature or the dissolved oxygen. That's something I'm pretty fascinated to discover. And let's see, if you were a fish then, where would you like to hang out? And then where the fish hang out, what do you think the chemicals look like in the water? This is Little Cottonwood Creek. It's beautiful. This is also our drinking water. So what kind of standards here might look different than standards for, say, the pond, which is um, drinking water and living water for those ducks? answer these questions and more curiosities whatever pops up tomorrow um, on the hike so I am so excited for you to join us here well this feels like it's gonna be really fun so I, we might do it again Let's just pop up tomorrow and then maybe every Tuesday whoa that would be so crazy but there's so many cool places to explore so we might take our measurements go somewhere new and come back another season and see what's changed as another really awesome way to conduct science and to be a naturalist come back season after season and see what's changed okay and overlooking this beautiful wetland kind of occurs to me like is there even any water down there and if there's not what makes a wetland wet i'm always looking for places where humans have impacted this landscape. So I look across and I see a building and I kind of wonder, does that building affect the quality of the river? All right, so here we have some Russian olive, which is technically invasive, but it is a key part of this ecosystem at the same time. Um, it provides habitat for birds, 
and I hear these berries are edible. Uh, so I'm going to experiment, yeah, and see what happens. I hope I'm alive tomorrow. They're honestly pretty good. I got and they're like pretty fuzzy. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna do that again, but the experience was worth it. Kind of sweet. Very, very hairy. Okay, so this is a super interesting spot to be. We're gonna take a little bit of a risk here, go out on the line, and notice, oh my gosh, this is a pretty interesting test. To the left, the Jordan River water that goes down canals for to replace natural springs where water's been taken out for drinking water. Um, and then this is Little Cottonwood Creek, which is the drinking water. So Jordan River, drinking water. What do you think is the difference in water quality? And we get a good indication of what I think a lot of people think of when they think pollution to a, a river, right? And so here, that's one example of pollution. But then when we think about other pollutants, like there are invisible things inside this water that would um, cause a difference in the way that we're able to consume it or play in it. For example, if there's E. coli in the river, you would not want to go in there because it produces a cytotoxin that would harm you. Um, and cause rashes and stuff like that. So it's important that you designate like what is the use? What is this water used for? And that's called the beneficial use. And you can look back at the interview with Elise Hinman, our watershed protector, and she'll tell you even more about that. Which is pretty cool. All the different standards. Ooh, we see some for the biological survey. Got some mallards. Okay, a little mystery here. So these are some of my favorite things to see in nature. These are called rose hips. And what part of the plant do you think they are? That's the question. If you um, open one up, let's see here. Take one out, I'm gonna bite it open. You see the seeds, and they're actually covered in this thing called pappus, which is pretty cool. Um, all that hair. And yeah, so if you eat this high in vitamin C, animals eat it, poop it out over there, new plant grows, but maybe where it needs to go to the bathroom, which is over there. But this I've never seen before. Is it natural, normal, tumorous, invasive, something kind of like witches? Uh, hair or or witch's broom, I think it's called, and um, if we get to the bottom of it, what's what's here? Rawr. Let's see. Seems like it's taken over the edge. Oh, mistletoe, I was gonna say something that's parasitic in nature. You see them all over these. I'm like, kind of like, what the? What the what is going down? And then some of the rose hips are like really have rotted away. So yeah, I don't know. You can tell it's a rose, it has thorns, right? Mm hmm. Hmm. Maybe we'll make some new friends. Eat some snacks. Look into some square pupils. Okay, so along the way we can search out for some shade from cottonwoods, willows, and red birch, and box elders. Okay, so back here we have an example of each one of these. Um, I believe this is an elm though, it doesn't look super healthy. This is an elm. So lots of the elms. Um, 
Well, what's what's what? What's what? That's a willow. This also doesn't look super healthy. Let's see if we can get a good example. Oh, we'll have to figure out which one's which. I wonder how long ago this tree died and how old this tree is. It's probably a massive, massive tree. You can find that out. to see though. Hmm. Do some trees not have rings? That's the question. So the question is, how did this tree die? What do you think? There's a box of elder tree, you can tell from the leaflets that are in groups of three, or like little lobes of three, and groups of three. And early settlers used to tap their sweet sap sap was gathered into syrup and to form brownish white sugar. It's hmm. so another interesting example of two different rivers coming together. Um, we have a creek from the right coming into Little Cottonwood and another interesting scientific question. What happens when they meet? At the confluence, the joining of two rivers. Oh, very interesting. So as we walk around the corner, we get an answer of where that that stream comes from, comes from the pond. So what happens at the confluence of the pond and the stream? I think that's sample site number four that I came up with today. So sample site number one, pond versus pond. Number two, pond versus, or no, Little Cottonwood Creek fast versus slow area. And then that site where there's the Jordan River that was diverted in a canal over the creek. Um, yeah, those are things that I... And then here's four. And the pond hits server, the confluence. So lots of things to study tomorrow. Lots of data to take. I think we might have to come back multiple times. Which is pretty fun. Because I love this place. And so do they. Woo! A treat. As I was going to leave, I came across... I think a nighthawk. Oh, do you see that? Oh, what a pretty bird. And say goodbye to the duckies.